Battles over the level of government involvement in religion have a special place in constitutional law. In 2002, the United States Supreme Court decided Zelman v. Simmons-Harris, a case that shows how the line between church and state is far harder to draw than it appears. In the 1990s, the Cleveland City School District suffered from widespread poverty and abysmal educational performance. Cleveland public schools were some of the worst in the country. Desperate to improve its situation, Ohio instituted a scholarship program to provide vouchers to students whose families met certain low-income requirements. The parents of eligible students could then decide which school their child would attend, including both religious and secular private schools. At the time, 82% of the private schools that participated in the program had a religious affiliation, and 96% of students using the aid program attended religiously affiliated schools. Cumulatively, this created the appearance that the government was disproportionately funding religious education at the expense of secular schools. Simmons-Harris and other taxpayers objected to the use of their money to fund religiously affiliated schools. They brought suit in federal district court, asserting that the program effectively advanced the religious missions of the schools in violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment. The district court agreed with the taxpayers and granted summary judgment in their favor. The Court of Appeals affirmed. The Supreme Court granted cert to determine whether a state can constitutionally provide financial assistance to low-income students when a large percentage of students choose to attend religious schools. In a 5-4 to four decision, the court held that the government can constitutionally fund educational programs based on financial need, even where most participating students choose to attend religious schools, as long as there are legitimate non-religious alternatives available for students. Chief Justice Rehnquist determined that the voucher program was permissible under the Lemon Test for Establishment Clause analysis. The Lemon Test asks first whether there is a secular purpose for the government program, second, whether the primary effect of the program is to advance or inhibit religion, and third, whether the program creates excessive entanglement between the government and religion. First, the court concluded the program had a secular purpose because it was designed to assist low-income children in obtaining quality education. The aid didn't have the primary effect of advancing religion because it was distributed on the basis of financial need and without reference to religion. All private and public schools in the area could participate in the program. Lastly, the court found no excessive entanglement with religion because the high percentage of religious schools affiliated with the program resulted from choices made by private individuals. It was the parents, not the government, that determined where the scholarship money went. What's more, the parents of eligible students had meaningful non-religious options available to them and could freely choose between religious and secular schools. Therefore, the court upheld the constitutionality of the program and reversed the judgment of the Court of Appeals. In her concurring opinion, Justice O'Connor evaluated the actual proportions of state scholarship funding provided to religious schools compared to the funding provided to non-religious public schools. In comparison, the scholarship program was insubstantial and the amounts were consistent with other federal aid already provided to religious institutions. Justice Thomas, also concurring, emphasized the policy objective of helping bring poor children out of poverty and the importance of parental choice in educating children. Justice Breyer dissented. He advocated for a stricter separation of religion and state in the governmental funding of primary education. He pointed out the risk of religious conflict because the program prohibited religious schools from denying enrollment based on religion. Because the Establishment Clause was designed to prevent religious conflict, he argued that the program was unconstitutional. Justice Stevens also dissented. He argued that the availability of private choice had little to do with the permissibility of state funding for religious education. He viewed these as separate issues and agreed that the program was unconstitutional. Zellman was a major win for the proponents of school choice, but the debate was far from over. In the 2017 case of Trinity Lutheran Church of Columbia v. Comer, the court held that it was unconstitutional for states to exclude religious options from otherwise neutral and secular public aid programs.